dream come true for you? Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? Manchester United is back on the menu. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a big game this Sunday at home at Old Trafford against lads. It's Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur coming up to big bad Manchester. Um, Big match for Manchester United. United season in disarray. Complete mess. EPL. Everything not going our way, not playing good football, injuries, not converting, not playing a game out. Uh, but hey, 2024, fresh start. Uh, we got a win, a decent one against a very lowly side in Wigan. And now we're getting some lads back, most importantly. Some of the some of the reinforcements are starting to show up. Martinez, Casemiro, Mason Mount. Um, so hopefully some of those lads feature. Luke Shaw, we could use him back. But either way, all I'm hoping to see is some effort. All I'm hoping to see is some decent football, maybe a clean sheet, maybe a couple of goals. But either way, it's a big game for Manchester United, for all the Red Devils out there. How are you feeling? How are we doing, sir? Doing great. Uh, belated birthday. Mason Mount, Mason Mount's birthday. <laughs> Number one Mason Mount fan here on the pod. We hope to see him back soon for Manchester United, sir. Celebrate his birthday. Get a goal. Hopefully, we can see him back on the bench soon for Manchester United. But first, it's Ange Ball coming to Old Trafford, the Australian manager. If you're not familiar with him, he's making a name for himself. Tottenham faltering, though, recently in the table. They're down to fifth on 39 points. United in eighth with 31. So, Tottenham is the perfect scout for Manchester United to start 2024 off right in the league. Can we use that big Wigan win momentum at home at Old Trafford to get the boys rolling? You absolutely, it's going to be one of two things. We ain't, we ain't drawn. I'm pretty sure about that. We either get to get beat up. It's bad errors. Maybe an Onana howler, um, or we're going to catch them out. I think that high line is actually set up pretty well. If Ayrton Hogg sets up the boys the right way and doesn't play McTominay, assuming Erickson's available back in the fold, obviously he was sick for the Wigan FA Cup tie, um, but we can get behind them. We have more speed than they do. Rashford, Garnacho, even Hoyland. So I, I'm hoping for a good game. It's got to go two ways. Either it's like, we're back, baby, even though we're not really back, or it's like, we're absolute dog shit. Fire this bald idiot. Because it's never a dull moment at Manchester United. A lot going on. You know, Ratcliffe. We're loaning players out. Sir Jaden Sancho finally packed up his shit and got out of Manchester. So sayonara. Um, but either way, can't wait for EPL to be back. There's not a ton of games for Manchester United this month. We've got the next round of the FA Cup. Right, I think on the 27th it hasn't been confirmed yet. Yep. And then we've got Wolves at the very end of the month. So this is a big game. We need to chip up. And these are the type of games. You know, it's not City. It's not even Liverpool or Arsenal. Spurs. It's a beatable side. We could have had a much better performance than we did early in the season when we lost to them away. Um, and if you want to chip up and try and get into Europe, whether it's Europa League or Champions League, you have to beat the Villas, the Spurs, the Brightons. You're laughing. You're laughing. Chip up. You're laughing. <laughs> you want We're to chip eighth. up. We're eighth. I'm trying to get above eighth. Hey, what can you I say? To, yeah, you want to chip up. Uh, you got to do a little bit uh, more to get uh, Champions League football. Uh, this is uh, calling it must win excuses injuries absolute you know we've had heard excuses the whole season right we've had a nice break getting players healthy beat a nice wigan side full strength into wigan and tottenham at home i mean like this is lads it's tottenham if tottenham come to our house and dominate us beat us convincingly we can't create as many chances low on the xg just a low energy performance for manchester united we're heading down that table. I mean, how much farther are you going to go? Honestly, eighth? Is that embarrassing enough? Ninth? Tenth? Depths of the league table we've not seen post-Christmas in my living memory, sir. And uh, this game, you have to set the tone. We have to come out. It has to be, we ain't going down. <laughs> we ain't going down with this ship. Uh, the Dutchman has to get his boys fighting. That front line scoring, and we got to be defending for our lives because if Tottenham Hotspur 
come into our house and clean our clocks, we done. Oh, we already might be done. Uh, this season feels done to many Manchester United fans. You know, that's how I kind of prepare going into any given match at this point in the season. I, I expect us to lose because expecting too much out of this team is just a, a one-way road to disappointment, <laughs> to disappointmentville. So I agree with you. I think every game basically that isn't against like City and Liverpool and maybe Arsenal for the remainder of the season is effectively must win. When you lose to fucking Bournemouth and West Ham's and all these dog shit teams badly, um, you can't be... You can't be dropping points no more or like at least you can't be not showing up. So I think we were a little hard done in that first game against them. Actually, they had that reg- probably the worst handball call I've, I've seen. But at the same time, we didn't convert our chances beyond that call. And that's on United. And that's the same issue we've seen all season. And then we gave up dog shit deflection goals uh, to Spurs. So, hey, no excuses. Play like a champion. It's about going up there, putting a performance. And hey. the only hope is, hey, Ratcliffe showing up. Maybe that will motivate the boys in some semblance, or maybe they won't even notice. So we're still top of the table in the excuse factory uh, table, right? Well, we can whinge all day, but that gets old <laughs> after a while. So, you know, I'm sure the fans don't no, want to hear complaining saying, about how bad we factory. are. I'm no, not, I mean, like, it's like we should have been. I'm calling straight facts, bro. I'm calling like, straight yeah, facts. Exactly. I'm just yeah, calling so it like I like, see it. Balls and yeah, balls so and strikes are rare. If we had no, if we had no in- injuries, if we, if we didn't have these calls, never mentioned injuries. This and that, and this and this, we'd be first in the in the league. So it's like you know, say that. Uh, we haven't played bad football at all. Uh, also, so did not say that. At the, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, we play horrible football. About eighth place sounds right, and we got to start playing better. I mean, I, that's what it is. It's like we got to start playing better. That comes from effort, tracking back, intensity on the press, chance creation, clinical in front of net, everything in between. We need to see a new Manchester United. It is a new year. The reason why I say this is must win back against the wall is because if you're losing the fifth, you sure as hell ain't getting top four. And if we ain't getting top four, we know where this is going. So uh, just kind of calling out this is a big spot. It's also a big spot because if you can get the three points, it gives you some breathing room to get healthy, get some injuries. It's an easy FA Cup tie. You get another win. Oh, wait, it's three on the trot. We got some momentum going into February. That's exactly what we want to see. We don't want to see doom and gloom the rest of the year. We want to see Manchester United chipping up, getting some momentum, playing well under this manager and seeing our players excel. That's what we want to see as fans. And unfortunately, it's been a rough go of it. Uh, but you know, the excuse factory will excuse on and we'll, and we'll go from there. We'll go from there. Doom and gloom city over here. Uh, yeah, it's a huge game and we don't know. Huge, what, huge, huge. You don't know what Manchester United side is going to show up. Um, the good, bad or the ugly. Are they going to show up for 90 minutes? Are they going to create chances? Are they going to convert chances? Are we going to be able to pass through their press? We know they're going to high press. We know they're going to play a high line, but at the same time, Hey, I don't know. I don't know who's going to show up, so I'm not even defending this team. I'm just saying when we do, if we play the, the way we're capable of playing, even how poor this, this season has gone, this is not that good of a team. Spurs is not that good. Their manager isn't that good. They're, they, he, they're like every season, there's a new manager that the press licks up and down. And Anj, Mr. Mate, he was their guy. This year, came out of and thought they were winning the league. I think you included. Uh, and they're in fifth, and they maybe or may not finish in the top four. But I don't care about Spurs. I care about Manchester United. So we know what the boys got to do. We got to show up. We got to not play <laughs> McTominay in midfield. And that will they give might us a good beat us. They might beat us, but I hate them. Yeah, they might beat <laughs> they're, us. They're no good. They're, they're no good. They're you think Spurs are good? good they've won, they've won yeah. two titles in their entire history. 1960 and 1962. Good. I would say that watching their football where they've scored 49 goals, which is uh, almost double what we have, uh, and they're, uh, you know, have a positive goal differential. It, it, you know, it's just like they're playing better than us. Yeah, they are. So that, that's all I care about, really, is like how how well we can play. But, sir, we're going to break it all down. Quick PSA for the podcast. If you like the America Devils, we are for fans by fans. Just the Buffets given to you straight from the couch. We don't have any commercial sponsors. You want to support us. You want to go the extra mile. Join our Patreon, patreon.com slash American Red Devils. You get a behind-the-scenes episode every single month. Tons of other benefits. Also, a great community of the creme de la creme of the American Red Devil. So please check it out and meet other top-tier members. Sir, you got to be a top-tier member. What are you doing? Uh, AmericanRedDevils.store for your merch, beanies, hoodies, shirts, scarves, you name it. Also, check out our blog, AmericanRedDevils.com. 
And also, you can like, subscribe on the social, sir. You can tell about reviews wherever you listen to your podcasts. Reviews are a great way to support the American Red Devils podcast. Uh, they help us get found organically. They help us get found by other top Muppets like yourself. And we're giving away free merch. All you have to do, write a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify and send a screenshot of that review to americanredoubles at gmail.com, and I will personally pick, pack, and ship some free ARD gear sent right to your door anywhere in the world. Here's a great five-star review from J.C. Wilson, 3228. Great podcast, great podcast that covers the best club in the world. These guys take a lot of time to watch the games and discuss what's going on with the club, <laughs> and it shows in the quality. Keep up the good work, boys. Keep your laughter to yourself. Glory, glory. Man United, how dare you laugh, sir? Manchester United. A lot of time. Top, top a, lot of, reds, man. a lot of time. Woo, a lot of time watching shit football. A lot of time talking about shit football. And a lot of, even more time defending shit football. Let's get into it. I, I ain't Let's defending get. it. Oh, I know you aren't. You're just whinging about it. <laughs> I'm Let's calling go. it. All right, that's right. We got our next match. It's Manchester United versus Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur. Old Trafford, English Premier League, Sunday, January 14th, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, sir, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. At least we got a good kickoff here on the West Coast. Lifetime versus Tottenham. Who cares about them? 96, we've won, drawn 50, lost 54. First time we played, we drew in 1899 in the FA Cup. 1-1. Last five, 1-3, drawn one, and lost one. That draw, that 2-2 draw last April brutal that one where we had a two goal lead obviously it had top four implications then we kind of bottled that one and then obviously earlier this year we bottled it was a loss we bottled top four we did not but that was again i I get we had a screaming start amazing first half and then like that, that left a good taste in your mouth Oh, I just don't think we bottled top four when we finished third. No, I said we. I said it was a battle for top four. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. You misheard me. Me uh, The excuse factory is easily, easily triggered here. Uh, and then uh, we uh, lost to them 2-0, but it was technically a win uh, per the excuse factory. So um, regardless, they are playing well. And Ange Postacoglu, the manager of Tottenham Hotspur, Alex does not rate the guy. Interesting story. I've watched a lot about him on his backstory. He comes from Australia. Uh, for anyone who wants to learn more about him, uh, he actually was the national youth national team coach. And there's this great video on YouTube where he gets in an argument w- with one of those Australian talking head sports broadcasters, which is great. And he gives him the business. Then he got fired after that, I believe. Uh, thought about quitting coaching and he actually came back. Uh, did really well with the national team in the World Cups or in 2014 we, when we went to Brazil, uh, went over to Japan, did well there. So he's kind of a journeyman, uh, done it everywhere. He's been success- very successful uh, where he's coached. And obviously, I feel like in England, it's like the American managers, the Ted Lasso. What does that make the Australian manager? No one took him seriously. And he's playing some good football, obviously not good enough to win the league with Tottenham, but uh playing better with kind of a ragtag crew so uh interesting to see how it progresses and interesting to see how he shows up at old trafford yeah it's a big battle for united uh he's the, a bit of a golden boy in the press these days hey he has them high fly and they came out of the gate super hot at the beginning of the season they play they've been playing some great football they scored a lot of goals I'm envious how many goals they've been scoring uh down in london and we know exactly what they're gonna do you know they're gonna press high they're going to do a high line. They're going to try to get Sun in. Uh, Richarlison, you know, he's a he's a proper bluffer, if I must say. He had that goal in the World Cup, but he hasn't done much beyond that. But, it, hey, it's going to be a hard game. If United don't show up at the beginning, we could get punished very early because at the same time, <laughs> how do you counter one high line with another high line and, you know. Could get Hammer messy. Richarlison to score. Hammer that betting no, line for Werner's going to score, score bro. Like, like, the yeah. bluffer Werner's going to score. That's who's going to uh, score. Last five Tottenham coming in. They beat Nottingham Forest. They beat Everton. Uh, Brighton cooked them 4-2. They did beat Bournemouth 3-1. Uh, they have beaten Burnley 1-0. Uh, so, you know, the results are pretty good uh one four of five uh in the league they did they did lose to brighton who you know also beat city but they're a little all over the place kind of down the table where we are but uh look i think this is um this is a real test i don't fear tottenham ever i i look at their roster i'm not shaking in my boots 
Um, but at the end of the day, it, it comes down to form. And you have a team who's kind of, you know, playing well in form and United probably better players uh, out of form. And it's like, how is that going to stack up and can we turn it on? 100%. You know, this is one of those games not dissimilar from Villa. You know, they're, they're almost chipping above what they should in terms of uh, squad perspective. They're playing above their means. They're probably outplaying the players they have, especially considering that they sold their best player um, to Bayern Munich. They lost Harry Kane, and they're still able to score 49 goals in the first half of the season. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. So it's going to be a big challenge for us. But like you said, I'm not, I've never been afraid of Tottenham their fans, their history, or even their players. But if United don't show up, we will lose this game, and that will be embarrassing because, A, you're losing to Tottenham Hotspur. Um, all you have to do is go to a, hot, a Tottenham Hotspur game and meet some of those fans, and you realize what we're talking about. And at the same time, you know, the doom and gloom tour is going to just keep going. So I'm hoping the boys can show up. I think we will get chances. I think it's going to be about converting our chances because, like I said, we can take advantage of that high line with our pace, but the boys have been so off in terms of, like, making the right pass or finishing their chances that, you know, Tottenham's going to have chances and they'll likely score a goal or two. Yeah. Uh, it truly really comes down to the midfield for United, but, you know, getting into uh, Adam's uh, scouting report, shout out to Adam, ARD fan shoots us a scouting report on the opposition. Obviously we're talking Ange ball, high intensity, high pressing, counter pressing and cartoonishly high defensive line. Like you me mentioned uh, the manager, like we've talked about, has said almost nothing would cause him to change a strategy. And this season he went down to nine men against Chelsea and they still held the high line going for the dub. Uh, so brave kind of cartoonishly brave. Uh, <laughs> like that, you know, maybe, maybe it's all Australian confidence here as well. Australian versus Dutch confidence players to watch the right back Pedro Porro. He's one of the better attacking fullbacks in the premier league and had a worldly against Burnley in the FA cup on Friday. Delo might have his hands full with Poro and Kulisevsky on that side. Kulisevsky also playing very well. Timo Werner, they just signed. He's in London, was training today. Um, obviously, you know, he failed at Chelsea. I, who knows how he's going to do at Spurs. But, you know, if uh, Podge and Postacoglu could get a tune out of Timo Werner, that would be something. Uh, also, you mentioned Richarlison. You know, he, he's, he's scoring under Ange. You know, this guy is a grade A bum from my perspective. It'd be the equivalent of getting Anthony turned on. Uh, like we said, they're currently in fifth. Uh, get him. Uh, hit him. Hit United. Anthony. <laughs> uh, United are getting players healthy. Uh, Spurs do have a lot of injuries. Uh, Madison's out. Van de Ven, Saar, Basuma, and Son um, all on it duty in AFCON Asian Cup. So, you know, we complain about injuries like no one else is injured as well. That's something that, you know, Spurs has been struggling with. They're playing the 4-2-3-1. Uh, you know, look, like I said, uh, you're going to see the likes of Benton Kerr, Kulisevsky, Richarlison, Johnson, Davies, like, and is this really a team to be afraid of coming to Old Trafford? No. Um, but, you know, we're going to see, and they're going to set the tone. Adams takes says Spurs and Villa are the only teams we look good against because their high lines allow Bruno and to play Rashford and Garnacho in behind. If Ange would set his team up in a mid block like an adult, we lose three <laughs> nil. Like an adult, but man. he's a purist, so we're going to get chances to run on them. Two one United win with a revenge VAR intervention. He like is that. also mentioning the like VAR uh, call. But look, let's get into our injuries. We have Martinez, Casemiro, Shaw. I'm Robot, Malasia, may you see him out, Lindelof, Magoo, Martial, and obviously Jaden Sancho gone. Erickson Shaw and Martinez, all possible to be back. Please. <laughs> the, we need all the butcher. Them. I think all of those back. players. All those players. Sir, what is your 11? Ooh, the Adam. Shout out to Adam. That was a great recap, sir. Well, well articulated as well. Uh, my 11, I'm doing Onana and that, you know, he's small, small AFCON later. I guess he's going the day after. I'm going to do AWB, even though he doesn't offer the same goal threat, because like uh, Adam pointed out, you know, I think we want to stifle their attack. Varane, it's probably too soon for Martinez, so I'm going to do Evans, but Shaw's going to make it back. I'm going to do Erickson, Kobe, Bruno, Rashford on the left, Hoyland, and Garnacho. And at the end of the day, do we have a better team? Even with the injuries, we have better players. We're not playing as well as they are, and that's it form so if we show up i think we can beat this side but if we don't show up we will lose what's your 11 sir 
uh, if we show up, sir, we will win. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll see. Who knows what we're going to get. Uh, we could, like, yeah, this team's all over the board. I uh, would say, oh, Nana, uh, you're going to get Delo, Veron, Evans, Shaw. Uh, I'm going to go with Kobe, McTominay, Bruno, Rashford, Hoyland, Garnacho. Uh, sir, you want to give us the odds? Yeah, I think if McTominay starts, we lose because, like, the chances will be had if we have the two players that can play balls on the top, and that's Bruno and Erickson. So that's going to be a big one if Erickson's back and not ill and chosen the first place by the bald fraud. Uh, the odds, United are favorites. This means we're definitely losing. Plus 115 at home, uh, plus 290 for the draw, and plus 200 for the Spurs, sir. Uh, given the odds, what is your score prediction? Uh, I mean, th- this one is tough. Um, you want to go first? I think we're going to lose. Emotional hedge. 2 1. We get a goal, but then they get like, they get a VAR call, and then they, I, you know, somebody, I, Richarlson, Werner or Richarlson. That's how it's going to go. It's like the two biggest bluffers in their squad are going to give us the death blow, and then the chaos tour continues, and we'll hear about Graham Potter for the rest of the month. What's your score prediction? Uh, I I think draw. I think I'll go one one, but they outplay us. Like XG is like you know two seven to you know point seven. You know, like they dominate us at home, but we get we like squeak a draw. So like I I think that's most likely uh, what we'll see. Um, and you know if it, if it goes their way, you know the, obviously they'll win. But I'm I'm gonna call dr- this seems like draw. Uh, you know, United can argue that we didn't lose, but that's pretty much it that's what i feel there you go let's get into some news united in the news so we're tons of news this week takeover coming if you haven't heard about it tell us well this broke um and i i don't hate to say it it's i'm just surprised to say it but like the best journalistic organization right now covering english football is the athletic uh, and they keep on coming with these bangers. Here's a good one about how Manchester United will set about appointing a chief executive. There's been a lot of talk from ourselves included that it is a sure thing that Jean-Claude Blanc will be the CEO. Now, additional detail has come out. I think this probably wasn't the filing. So, John, you probably knew about this. Um, but at the end of the day, Radcliffe and Co. will not have majority say in who is the CEO. They'll have majority say in who the technical director is and all things sporting, but because the CEO is above the sporting aspect, right, has the commercial aspect, and then there's the corporate stuff, right, around whatever, 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 like raising money, more debt, et cetera, um, the Glazers have the edge, sir. So given that is the case, do you think the Glazers will still be inclined to pick, like, a numpty mouth breather? No, 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 no. No, so it, what you when you do a deal like this, uh, you're all aligned right now. Like the Glazers are aligned with Jean Claude. They know who the CEO is uh, going to be. Is what you mean? Like they've already picked the CEO? No, like they're going to basically go with the flow with Ratcliffe now, and they reserve the right in the governance. Like just because the the legal docs say they have the right, doesn't mean you need to exercise that right if you agree with Ratcliffe. So the idea is you don't like do a deal like this, and people are hostile day one. Yeah. But if they, but if Ratcliffe's like, hey, I know a great guy, and they and they meet him, and they like him, and they appoint him, and he sucks, then they're going to take control. <laughs> so the idea is that like Ratcliffe is going to get a lot of leeway, and then that, and then when it comes down to the governance, which is like the rights of the uh, the board and essentially what they can uh, do based on the class of shares, the Glazers will take control. So like it, they could fire Jean Claude. That that's what that means. It'd be like. But I doubt like Ratcliffe wants a CEO and the guys are going to be like, no, like that's not how you would, you would automatically be on bad terms. Right. So like the whole idea is everyone sits at the table. They're all breaking bread. They all agree on this like new plan. And, um, there, and that, and that clause will be needed unless that plan does not work. Right. I think so. The, the idea of the athletic is a little over their skis and commenting in that way, but, uh, that is there for sure. But it's, if you're doing the deal, it's, it's not like you're you're not at loggerheads now. You'll be at loggerheads if every guy you pick sucks. That's great clarification and a very good point, right? You'd hope a lot of the a lot of the well wishes and a lot of the conflict was left after the deal was was penned. So at this point, 
there should be some alignment, as you pointed out. And at the end of the day, you know, they're going to let Ratcliffe go out on his own, right? Let him pick the He CEO. wouldn't do the deal. Let him pick he the DOF. He wouldn't do the deal unless unless he was given, like, uh, assurances that they would be okay with it, right? Like, think about it. Ratcliffe wouldn't do the deal if the Glazers wanted to put Ed Woodward above him. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. So, like, like, it's like when you sign a contract with somebody, you hope to never use the contract, right? You hope that the, that you work together and it goes great so that you don't have to be like, gotcha, paragraph X says this. Like, so clearly they're at a line on what they're going to do, and – um, I'm sure the Glazers most likely just have to bless it. It would be like, hey, will you pick the CEO, we're going to okay it. And obviously they're going to be concerned about the commercial side. And so Ratcliffe's going to find a guy who can deal with that. And obviously Jean-Claude can't. So. That's, that's, you know, reassuring for me. This is probably me just making a um, molehill into a mountain. But either way, you know, hopefully everything goes well with Jean-Claude Blanc. We're all rooting for him. Speaking of which, we're rooting for whoever's going to be brought into the front office. We're hearing a lot of news, um, but apparently, you know, for what it's worth, in the next seven to ten days, there will be some significant actions beginning regarding lining up new CEO, sporting director under, under Ineos. Um, but a lot of names being swirled around. We talked about Dan Ashworth. We talked about Paul Mitchell. Some other fellows that are involved in Premier League sport um, in England. So this is going to be one to watch. But you know. I think at the end of the day, like you said, the Glazers are going to let Ratcliffe run with it because they don't give a shit. They've gotten their payoff for now. You know, they're not doing any dividends for the next three years, and they want him to make the asset more valuable. Well, how do you do that? You hire people that are qualified to do the job in the first place. So, you know, let's get in a good CEO. Jean-Claude Blanc fits the bill. If you find equal people for the technical role, the recruiting role, we should be okay. Even if it's not Ashworth. I mean, Ashworth is like the cream of the crop. Um, If uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Uh, I, I mean, it, it won't it, be as straightforward. I don't know. To spend more I don't money, know but I think you one. could still find other qualified technical directors. Other no, than it's because you're okay. Okay. Two, two things. Number one, Glazers can always fuck up everything. So yeah, that's they, <laughs> like, that number one, number one, I, like, yes, I think if you are sensible, like you could negotiate a deal like normal like when i say normal people would be like not like silver spoon like siblings who are billionaires because their dad acquired the sporting institution so like i sh i should be caveating that normal business people would operate this way and i could totally see how the glazers would be like normal they, one of the Normal's siblings the wants word. to do it this way and then the other one is like up ratcliffe's like you know what like they should just go away and let ratcliffe run at it for like 24 months right and then and then get get like the update every quarter, see how it's going. Like like that's any good person would give someone space to kind of like run the show a little bit. Uh, and who knows? Like and some people are really insecure. Some people are micromanagers. Some people might screw it up. So at the end of the day, like you're you're seeing like a new relationship. Like they're dating now, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna caveat the Glazers could just, just destroy this whole thing. So that got to say that. Uh, when it comes to Ashworth, Manchester United is so fucked, uh, <laughs> and we are just so Tell like you really think. <laughs> we are so bad we in the bad. transfer. Like so, oh like my okay, God, we are bad. When it comes to when it comes to transfers, like Paul Mitchell or like somebody who's like done it before at like Tottenham, like the pr the reason why you need the guy who like is the best is immediately anyone who interfaces with him and negotiates with him will then know that they, he can't be got. Right. It's almost like Manchester United has to acquire a new reputation in the transfer market through someone who is so legitimate that it cannot be questioned. And there was only a few DOFs like that. One went from Liverpool to Madrid. One's currently at city who came from Barcelona and the other one's Dan Ashworth. Right. So, uh, at the end of the day, like Dan Ashworth coming in, no one's going to be able to like push us around anyone else. Who's kind of like in that middle tier, like the palace guy, gonna, like it's Doug, gonna, it's Dougie from palace. <laughs> it's it's going to struggle. Like it really struggled. Cause it's going to be like, they haven't made it yet in their career. Uh, the job might be a little too big for them. And then it's going to come down to kind of like the, you know, the poker game that is the transfer market. And I feel like unless you've played it so many times uh, and like you look at Ashworth's record, it's like in, uh, like it's unbelievable. It's impeccable. And, and you need that record here now. 
and that's how we get ahead and we turn the ship around like right away somebody else i i'm worried it, to me it's ashworth or a bust honestly it really is we that is the number one signing that we need to make for that very reason and it's so that we can sell players we can buy players like Right now, if you if anyone goes in there, it's going to be the same thing. Like, just people won't buy from you out of spite because you're united, and they everyone, it, it, like, it's like a you want to talk about real conspiracy? People love screwing over Manchester United when it comes to transfers. Teams know they get us over the barrel, and unless you get an Ashworth in with that cred, you you're going to keep getting got, and that's the number one thing we got to turn around. Number one thing. I I do agree with you that our rep is so bad. And and beyond rep, structural issues are so like everything needs to be refreshed, rebuilt, new talent brought in, best people get to stay, the rest, you know, move move on with their lives, new systems, new processes, everything. And then beyond that, like you said, the reputation we have in the market is probably the worst of any major player in global football in terms of who we buy. And also our ability to, get, to be gotten, like our ability to be gotten and like value Anthony at 25 and then somehow pay 85 for him at the end of a window. Um, and there's so many, there's so like talk about Jaden Sancho, no one else being in that deal. We pay 73 and then gave the guy 350 and he was 21. So there's a huge list of that. And I, I just, I don't want it to be like all or bust, like a week in, a month in to the new rebuild. Uh, I do agree with you. Like he's the straight, most direct route to getting an elite institution in terms of a front office but if we don't get him then what we're up we're up shit's creek but i do agree like he'll get you there right away and he is in the elite and there are very few in the elite that are available like you said there's like a handful of guys and most of them are already at top top clubs the one thing about newcastle is like we're a objectively bigger better club than they are even if they've had some better form in recent months so i'd be all about it and i agree it's like you pay over the odds because if you're gonna pay 85 million pounds for a guy who can't pass the ball on his right pay. What, how much could it cost? 10 million, 15 million to buy him out from new guy. It can't cost that much given how much we pay everybody out. We pay. No, but nobody, but everyone like, you know, and I know that anytime we're linked with a player, the value goes up to right. X. Yeah, totally. So that has to be like gone away with and hiring the crystal palace DOF. Or, you know, maybe even Paul Mitchell, I don't think is going to get rid that factor is still going to be there. But if you give an Ashworth type of character who, like I talked to about, like this, the his like the digitization of the transfer market, the platforms he works with, how how broad his approach is to recruitment. That's what you need to be able to find value, because you're just going to go around all the bluffers in Europe, the classic clubs that we buy from. And actually, once you start kind of going outside of that then all these guys are going to want some of that cash, right? So like United being a buying club and paying other clubs in Europe is a good thing. But once the jig is up and like someone needs to know that game and play it. And I, I just feel like this is this just like the next manager comes in to take us to the promised land. It's harder because it's Manchester United, like the director of football to come in. It's harder because it's United and you want the guy. That's why you ultimately with the manager, you want the Pep Guardiola. You want the number one guy in the world. Uh, to come in uh, you know I don't like Pep but like if he's available you need number one and that Dan Ashworth is that we need to get him and this is the our biggest weakness our biggest weakness that's keeping us from uh, competing over the long term no it's well said and there's so few of those guys and you can't just do it with one you also got to find the coach but they got in the individual from Barca before they got in Pep and he laid a lot of foundation so you know when Eric Ten Hag departs, they need to make the the requisite preparations for the next manager so we can have continuity and start building a squad, building the academy back, refurbishing everything. And front office is a huge part of that. And I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Uh, I think if Ashworth wants to move, it'll happen. I think that's the difference. Like if he wants to go and he's like, you could be the literally be the technical director for Manchester fucking United under a new ownership structure and you're the guy and we're going to defer to you like no he wants obviously dude he wants to get like I, 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 <laughs> there's no way that if, <laughs> you want to play for the saudis you want to play in newcastle it's like two hours further up it, it's very clear the benefits to coming to united for him right like i think going to sat going to newcastle was a, a good move he's done a good job he gets out of there yeah you know, it's a different league right you, you get to manchester united you know 
like where else can you go? I mean, there's only like Barca Real. It's like it. Exactly. Maybe I mean, like it, that, Bayern, that's it. There's like three clubs. That, that, there. Exactly. So, I mean, like you're, you're there, you're at the number one club in England. He's English. Like, like it, it matters, dude. Look at his age. Look at, you know, people understand United. They know it's an institution and sure. We'll carve out some space on Mount Rushmore for him. Next bit of news here uh, from Richie Romano, Jaden Sancho to Russia Dortmund. Here we go. Deal in place between United and Dortmund. No buy option. Uh, Dortmund will cover part of the salary plus a loan fee. Four million euros. Four million euros. Jesus. Uh, basically having them for free. But again, we know, um, you know, they're going to pay 100K of his 290K a week, which is a riot. But he'll be back on a football pitch. Next one, Anthony Marshall wants to stay, stay at Manchester United until the summer. He's not interested in a move away this month. Interesting from Martial. Um, he apparently rejected interest from Marseille, Fenerbahce, and the Saudi Pro League. And he wants to fight for his place under Eric Ten Hag. You have to remember these guys have uh, kids in school, et cetera. So I could see, you know, there's even personal reasons for him to go. Plus, uh, he'll be able to leave on a free um, at the end of the season. And, um, and if I may, none of these clubs yeah. are going to pay him 250 a week, I would think. So he's not going to get any better deal for the next six months. So why would he want to take a knee on that fat contract when he can ride it out for another six months? Uh, Hannibal to Sevilla. They're advancing towards a loan for the remainder of the season. Again, in this type of error with injury, I wish we saw more. I, uh, uh, another promising uh youth player who I think is good in the midfield and he actually showed well in, in a few games like this has been able to get game time uh, and so I just wish just like Palestri I wish we saw more of them um, you know we're not playing well <laughs> I don't, like and these kids aren't playing um, so again more kind of alone where does he stand uh, I don't necessarily love this one uh, then Joe Hugel signed a new contract with Manchester United Agreed fresh terms till 2026. So, um, some interesting news. And then uh, Jesse Lingard has offered himself to Barcelona. So, you had to put that's the bait. Lingard that's trolling bait for you. Um, I I agree with you on the Hannibal thing. You know, I I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he should have played maybe half those games that McTominay did. So, that's a shame because I think there's a player there. Um, and Hugo, we haven't really got to see him at all. So. I get. I don't know. We'll see. We're not scoring. I, like, why aren't we seeing? Why aren't we seeing Hugo in the 80, 80th minute? We're not scoring. I don't know. You know, he's I, obviously like, he has no problem playing youth. I mean, he has promoted plenty of youth. Maybe Hugo's not ready because even Kamwala, Amari. You know, it's like there has been a long list. So it's clearly he's not averse. Maybe he's averse to playing good football in the last eight months. But he's not no, averse to playing youth. You know, he's playing. But it, it'd be like you know what I'm saying, like. Like there's in. always a system with with like Sir Alex. Like it's like first he comes in for like ten minutes when we're up, then he comes in. You know, hey, we need a goal. Get him in. Like it, it always just kind of felt like there was a build of like exposure to like top tier teams with the young players. And I feel like we've kind of been like Hannibal's a great example. Like all over the place, he came in. I kind of felt like he was getting momentum. Then like I haven't seen him. Um, and so I, I just. It, to send him away on loan, I think we, we need him the rest of the season. Why not? You know, I, he hell of a player. I think he shows up, played in the World Cup, looked good. Like, I don't know. I, I, Hannibal is one where I think there's a player there. Uh, Hugo is just like, I don't know. Coin we've flip. never seen him play, but we've seen yeah. we've seen uh, Hannibal play in the Champions League. We've seen Hannibal play in the Premier League. I agree with you. I think he's a player. I think it's just that. I think it's the fact you're getting back Casemiro. You're getting back Mason Bout. Um, or Bot, he will be back before he leaves <laughs> in oh. the summer. So maybe I mean maybe that's justification, and we have fewer. That's fair. Days. No, you're right. You, you, no, we we all, we keep saying they're coming back. I just, still haven't. See, I, I, I like I keep I keep hearing they're Casemiro's coming back. It's like uh, mid January already, like, buddy. Like it's like Jesus, you know. Um, speaking of, uh, so like Paul Scholes is a riot. <laughs> uh, Jesse He's Lingard is doing some. J- Jesse Lingard is doing some workout. <laughs> On Instagram, and Paul Scholes just says, "Are you gonna? Are you just gonna fuck about in the gym, or are you actually gonna play football?" Uh, look, you know, uh, Paul Pogba's crew, you know, Jesse Lingard, one of them, uh, Paul Pogba, 
where are you at? Jesse Lingard, where are you at? All these guys. I mean, like, it's honestly, like, it's sad. It's sad to see because I remember going to that PSG game with you and Lingard playing on the wing. You know, I looked amazing. I think he's a talented player, but it became like he was just, like, fighting ghosts off the pitch or hater. I don't know. I just feel like something went wrong there. The Wayne Rooney coming off the field when we lost and everyone, and he said Lingard Pog with everyone dancing in the locker room after we lost. That sums it up. I think, unfortunately, right. Um, it's just something about, about these, these guys. Yeah. And I, you know, we've only been in the game 20 years. The ones, these kind of, maybe it's the new generation of players online, given everything's on Instagram and Twitter and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe this has always been a case, but like, ta- here's the thing. Talent alone doesn't get you there. Like, you have to be talented. You have to have the right attitude. You have to have the right work ethic. Um, and it's a shame because Paul Bug was an immensely talented player who probably didn't live up to his potential. Same about Jesse Lingard. I'm almost certain Jaden Sancho will fit into that camp. He'll he'll come back. Trust me, he's going to do very average in Dortmund. They're not going to want to buy him. No one else is going to want to buy him. There'll be a, probably be a new manager in the summer. He'll still fuck about, uh, and he'll run out of his contract and then go who knows where. So it's like... Is it on United? It's probably the perfect recipe. Like a club with no structure where the player power over is over every any manager who comes in no matter what really. Um kind of a perfect recipe because that anecdote, the Paul, you know, the the Rooney one when there was still Rooney and Zlatan in that locker room, and I think Carrick even too, and they were fucking dancing after losing, like that that speaks volumes. No, it's like I, I, like again, Sir Alex talked about his potential and i just feel like he should i feel like he should still be at united uh you know i feel like he, you know the like going to west ham then coming back then posting about west ham you know like all that drama all the off the field drama like fighting battles that are unwinnable that are all a distraction i just feel bad for the guy and again like he, he should like he should have went to west ham but he took like the big money deal to go to nottingham forest and like didn't play I just feel like, you know, that's like a career that what could have been. And ultimately what could have been is he probably could be playing at United doing well. I mean, he's like a good footballer scored. Hey, FA Cup winning goal, right? Uh, under LVG. So, you know, thanks for the memories, Lingard. Paul Scholes dunking on you. That will never get old, sir. Let's <laughs> beans, let's get beans, us- beans. Dude, I know. Uh, let's get into the fan questions here at D underscore Cole 18 out of the current squad. Loaned out youth and all, who needs to be sold and how much will their replacements be? What's a realistic expectation for the number of ins and outs by the end of the summer? Is it time to move on from Rashford, Sancho, Greenwood, and the good old English standard? What do you think? There's a lot in there, sir. (laughs) Um, I think most of the squad needs to be sold. And I think the priority for Radcliffe is, I think you pointed this out a couple pods ago. It's like, he's going to just try and, literally, he's going to look at the the salaries of the players from top to bottom and be like, who could we get rid of? And he's going to start with the biggest numbers. So he's going to start with Casemiro. He's going to start with Varane. Martial's not going to get a new contract. He doesn't deserve it. He's not worth it from a player perspective. He's not worth it from a money perspective. Um, and then at that point, like the next highest paid player is like a Bruno, not Bruno, Rashford. That's a harder one. You know, like, of course, Sancho needs to go. The green one one is a whole other discussion. All right, it's uh, it goes Casemiro, uh, eighteen million pounds a year, Varane, eighteen million pounds a year, Rashford, sixteen million, Anthony, thirteen million, Sancho, thirteen million, Mason Mount, thirteen million, Bruno, twelve million, Anthony, ten, Magoo, eight five, Shaw. Eight million. I, I I think you got to be getting all those uh, everyone above Bruno. <laughs> yes, yeah, basically every. I, I, other, basically. Hey, other than Mason, man, I, I think that's got to be the clearing number. It has to be the twelve to thirteen million are your elites, and this eighteen seven like it's Casemiro, Varane, and then Ra- it's really like Casemiro, Varane, and Rashford. I mean, uh, Marshall is coming off the book. Sancho will get sold, but yeah, no, I think honestly, like hate to say it you should sell marcus rashford um because you gotta like bruno or marcus gotta go that's my that's what i think what one of those guys has gotta go 
right? You know why? Because you need the money. Uh, and and you know what? It, like that. That's you know, it's like that's what it is. It's like you gotta get everyone back under. Uh, you're like I say, you like Casemiro right here, Verane right here, uh, Rashford will stay. They're not gonna get rid of him. No, they get rid of. Uh, they'll get rid of Bruno over Rashford. Martial, Sancho, Anthony Mount. Mount's gonna stay. Yeah, Bruno will stay maybe leave in a year or two, uh, depending kind of where things go. Anthony out, Magoo out, Shaw stay, Erickson in. Erickson basically will stay another year. Uh, Martinez stay, Onana stay, Donny done, Lindelof we <laughs> he's gonna be back. AWB Delo Hoyland. You know it's just. It's a, it's, it's Matt, dude. It's like, I, it's mashed potatoes. It's like, so you got to see what people want. This is the demand based business. Who you sell is going to be who, what people want. And so if people want to pay a lot of money for Rashford, he'll go. If people want to pay a lot of money for Bruno, he'll go. Um, and then obviously you're going to try to foist the Anthony onto foist. anyone. And Sancho. He's a foist at this point. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think it's how deep they go. And if there's any semblance of like trying to chip up in the next year or two. And if there's not, then you just, you have to sell Bruno too. Uh, as much as it pains me, because he's my favorite player of the current current group of lads, and also he works hard. Whereas like Rashford's work ethic is dubious, and his output is also dubious, right? Very hit or miss. Um, but I, I, I no, don't. I think I think, I think, I think they would sell. They should sell Rashford ahead of Bruno, but I think it'll be the other way around because the whole academy lad is you know it's like more emotional. It's less of a rational decision, and it'll be kind of heartstrings. So. This summer is going to be very interesting. I think it's going to be about just getting like the biggest earners off, even at, you know, like you said, Casemiro, Varan, Martial, best case scenario, Sancho, but I don't see anyone buying Sancho and taking on his wages. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I guess the, the answer to this question, and it's a good one at the underscore call, is it really comes down to this is going to be a multi phase, right? Multi window process, right? You're going to have right now in January, we're going to do nothing. It's just a lot of humming and on. They're closing the deal. It's just not enough time. Then they're going to get in. The real moves are going to be made in the summer, right? And it's all about goings, not signings, right? So we, I can imagine you get rid of a Rashford, you get a lot of money, and you loan Wild Wing Horse 2.0. It's going to be like barely get a squad together for next season. It's going to be out most likely. Remember, we're in eighth place. We lose the Spurs where we're like, you know, I believe Eric Ten Hag has to make top four and finish strong in the league to keep his job. So most likely that's not what's going to happen. And it's going to be about rebuilding the team, new manager, project, long term. That's how they're going to try to spin it. Lord help us. It's not Graham Potter. Regardless, next year, the squad is probably going to be worse than this year, but it might play as a team better. And then you, you add parts to it over time, right? So I, I we're going to be in a eighth to fifth type of mode for this season, next season, and then hopefully we're contending for top four after that, after a lot of players have left and, and, and a lot of new players have come in. That, so it's going to be, it's like a three-year rebuild. And uh, hopefully we play better football than we are now. And, that, and I see no reason why you can't, but... Who knows? Three year rebuild, best case, because a lot of these players are not players that are going to just trade real quick. Like, there's not a big market for Anthony. <laughs> there's not a big market for Jaden Sancho if uh, someone else isn't paying for his fucking contract. So, it, like you said, it's going to take years and years and years, and they're going to make signings, and some of them will go well, some of them won't. But I think the most important thing they're going to do is good and cheap, and actually good and cheap, right? So they're going to. By youngsters, they're gonna promote academy. They're gonna pick up loan deals, like you said, and just try and get the wage bill down as much as possible, so they can move that investment into the academy, into Carrington, and into Old Trafford, which should all lead to money one way or another. Uh, at Jimmy's Burner Zero, quote, sirs, love love that he's using the burner to to tweet us. Uh, sirs, which player returning from injury do you guys think is gonna have the most impact for the rest of the season? Ooh, that's a good question. What do you got? Uh, I think it's going to be Martinez. I think his calmness, his aggression, his ability on the ball um, is going to be a huge impact for this side. I, I think he just is going to help us play out the back. Also, the Casemiro, I, I still think there's a player there, even <laughs> though we overpay him. I mean, he is a player. He might take a couple games to get up to it, but he was elite last year. Um, so if he gets back up to form, 
him with Kobe would be a very effective midfield playing behind either Bruno or Mason Mount. Mason Mount could also have a sniff, right? But like, double pivot. You think that he's going to play the double pivot, double defensive uh, pivot. Like Kobe could play like, eight. That's not what Eric Ten Hag. That, that's not what he's well, doing. We haven't he's seen playing. those three midfields available. So we, we don't even know because he hasn't had Kobe and Casemiro and Bruno at the same time. No, I know, but he signed Mason Mount for that purpose to play where Erickson to play where Erickson was last season. Right? So maybe that, Casemiro, like, Mount, Bruno, right? Yes, that's what I think the plan was from the start. I think, got to go with my boy, Mason Mount, number one impact. Like, if you think about it, if we are going to tick and the season is going to turn around, the midfield you just said, Mason Mount, Bruno, and Casemiro, Playing in Garnacho, playing in Rashford, getting Hoyle and busy, like that would be a sight to see, right? And like that would change the game for for Manchester United. Absolutely. Casemiro could do the job in, in as the sole CDM. You have two great players in Mountain Bruno. If we can get that going, like that could make a huge difference for us the rest of the season. A healthy healthy Erickson, Manu coming in behind, learning from through Casemiro, like solve the midfield. Solve United. Like, that's really that's what it. we need to do. That's it. Uh, and so, you know, that's why. It, so you're right. It's probably Casemiro. But, like, I just feel that it's going to be, like, you know, coming in this late and injured and then getting up to speed. Like, how much of an impact can you really have? You know, uh, but, you know, if if we were going to turn around, it'd be because of him. So maybe I'm changing my answer to Casemiro. Uh, but, uh like we do need to solve the midfield uh, at United, and then you know who else could be a big impact? By and dear, because Onana's leaving. <laughs> we haven't seen this guy, so this will be really interesting. That you Ugh. nervous? Uh, you nervous for that? Are you nervous for that? <laughs> I mean, he's play. I don't know if By and Deer is even going to play, bro. It's like he's literally. They've already said he's not leaving Onana. That is for the Afcon until Monday, and then like he might try and get. Maybe we'll see him for the Wigan, not the Wigan game, the next FA Cup round. But I bet he's back by Wolves. That's a fucking mess. That whole thing is so weird. The whole like I retire, I retire, I'm going, I'm not going. I I don't think that'll matter because eventually Afcon's going to end by like what early Feb. So it's got to be either Casemiro, Mason Mount, or uh, Lissandra Martinez. You know. I mean, uh, let's just – I'm going to Google it here. Uh, African Cup of Nations. Uh, it's going to be through the February 11th, 2024. So a month, a month from now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that could overlap, obviously, with – I'm just looking at our fixtures really quick. Um, that would overlap with Wolves, West Ham, and Villa. Big games. Uh, Big obviously, games. obviously depends how far – uh, Cameroon uh, gets right. What happens so, if Bayern Deer is just like ball? Like, but they're good. Killer. Cameroon's good. So you know, I see. The, like, I see no reason. Uh, you know, like in the group, like you look, group stage goes to the twenty third of January, and then uh, you know, semifinals like Cameroon should be like in the mix quarter se- February second. So it just really depends how far he goes. Yeah, he's definitely going to miss Wolves. And then you have like he's flying back out of the after the quarters to get to West Ham. Like maybe I mean like most likely he probably misses Wolves West Ham. Uh so yeah. I mean who who knows, sir? It is interesting times at United. I feel like we could go to eleventh, twelfth place in the table. We could fight for fourth. It, it could go either way. And at the moment we're going down. I my gut says my gut says, you know. Where do you think we're going to finish? Higher or lower than where we are now? That would be a great one. Finish the season. Higher or lower than we are now? We're eighth. Uh, I mean, my head's saying the same. My head's saying about eighth. <laughs> my heart's saying like, like what I said at the beginning of the season. I said sixth going into the season. Sixth? I, I guess he has chipped up to six, but like, you know. It could go either way. It's either gonna go either way. I don't think we're gonna meddle wrong eighth. It's like we're either gonna like go full Chelsea or we're gonna like chip up and be right below top four and probably not finish in top four. But if we can get back in the race, that will that will garnish some goodwill, at least for me. Um, because that will require good football in order to get back in that fight. Because this is not even last year. It's like there are six teams, seven teams that are fighting and can fit into top four. And last year there were like five teams. So um it's gonna go one of two ways, like you said, and we're gonna find out in the next four weeks. 
It's tight because Brighton's on 31 with us, and then Wolves in 11th on 28. Right? We're in the you bluffer know, pack. So, We're like in the second. No, no, it's, pack, like, no. it's like I'm talking about everyone in the third, high 30s, right? Like Villa. No, I'm just saying like the seventh to 11 is tight. We're definitely going farther down the table before the end of the season. The question is like where we end. I think probably eighth sounds about right. Like you know, in my head, uh, I, I think we'll drift lower and we'll come back eighth or like you know and and that's that's probably uh you know that's the lowest finish we've ever seen for united you know uh you know so i i i'm we're so we're like just the problem with united and being a fan and watching this team is at the end of the day it's like i think we're coming back i'm telling you bro I, I can argue like, either. Yeah. You talk about excuse yeah, factory. Yeah, I can make up a good <laughs> argument for either. Why we'll come yeah, back like, or I'm why like, we'll get we're, worse. We're, I was like, we're, we got to play better, right? Like Martin, like I like, uh, <laughs> I, I got to play better, I'm, right? Martin is uh, Martin is comes back, gets injured again. I, I, I just know one of them will Casemiro Mount or Martinez. I, I, I know one it. will get injured again. It. Right away. I know like, it. Right you away. Know it's Martinez. Martinez. It's just like come back. He's in. Yeah, that's career. Like, his career is over. Then it's like foot injury keeps getting fucked up. It's like he, he's no. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> We're not talking about like thirty-one year old Casemiro, bro. Like he has like a metatarsal that like keeps breaking. That that is a big big problem. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> It's like a box of chocolates. It's, yeah. You don't know what you're going to get yeah. this season with Manchester United as well. We keep tuning in. And again, that's it. That's the pod. Thank you for everyone listening. Having a blast. Giving you the Muppet take. Enjoying, you know, shooting the breeze. Talking about Manchester <laughs> nice United. Nice and light. Keep it nice and light. Here we do at the American Red Devils podcast. I'll tell you. From, uh, from the second place to the eighth place. From the EFL Cup titles to the... Europa League final penalty shootouts. We're here to give you <laughs> the highs and lows of being a Manchester United fan. Uh, the good times are coming just not so soon, but we will be here when they do, sir. Uh, you want to support us? Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash American Red Devils, American Devils dot store, American Devils dot com. Sir, give us our top 10 downloads last seven days. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Chicago, Illinois, Los Angeles, California, Dublin, Ireland, Washington, D.C., Oslo, Norway, Brooklyn, New York, Houston, Texas, London, England, Charlotte, North Carolina, and last but not least, Melbourne, Australia. Appreciate all the American Devils listening week in, week out. We couldn't do it without you. Ooh, it's always darkest before it's, before it's dawn, or it's always darkest before it's pitch black. It's going to go one of two ways, but we're going to be with you every step of the way, like John mentions, up the red Sunday. Uh, Eng, Engball, how do you say his name? Anjay? Ange. Ange. Ange ball. Bald, our bald fraud. Either way, big match. We'll be with you next time. Appreciate all of you.